James Lennis. Thank you for coming by my tasting table. These gins are next, including six others from my top 10 list. Stay tuned to get my thoughts, perspectives, and resources on these particular gins. Stay tuned. Please give a like and subscribe to this channel. These are glorious, wonderful gins, and I thought quite intently about the top 10 list. So I anticipate doing uh, two gin reviews per year that is a top 10 list because I do expect some change outs. Not because I don't appreciate these gins, but because over time I'll be tasting more gins. I think there's very few people on planet Earth who have the ability and uh, resources to taste every gin at any given moment and to give that final pronouncement. So this is my number one gin. This is a 99 point gin. This is Monkey 47, of course, familiar to many of you out there. Schwarzwald gin, one liter format. And I try to get this at a, say, a duty free setting if I can. So people say it's too expensive or they only bought it once. And ultimately I say, I don't have this as my standard gin, though I wouldn't mind having that as my standard gin when I drink a gin beverage once or twice or three times a week. Ultimately, it's one that I might have once per month and it's a nice treat, I look forward to it. But I think this is a gin that is fantastic and it fits that mold of what I want it to be, which is something that's going to stand up to a, a cocktail and something that does well on its own. So either or is something I'm looking for, but I also want depth and complexity and this gin definitely delivers on that attribute. So many gins are really noticeable from the beginning, right? But how do they you know, experience and, and path through in terms of the palate towards the end of that cocktail itself? Many do not do a good job of that, this one does. And it's something that's characterized uh, in such a way that I think it's identifiable from beginning to end. And if I was blind tasting at the very end of maybe with an ice cube, uh, I could definitely still taste this particular gin. I think it's so remarkably well created and distilled. So the notation, I'll put a video review right up here. It's a 99 point gin, by the way. A characterization of stone fruit, uh, green citrus like kefir lime, uh, oyster shell, highly nuanced ginger notes, dried herbs like tarragon and wild sage, and a bit of white floral notation, pepper and clove. Number two is this Isle of Harris, and it's uh, infused with uh, sweet kelp. And so um, you can see that right there. It's a nice package altogether. This recently appeared in a Costco here in the Bay Area. It is expensive, and so when a lot of people say it's too expensive or they're disappointed, buyer's regret, I say don't buy a gin until you taste it, until you know what it's like. Uh, find a restaurant that might have this or look for it or don't buy it if you don't feel comfortable with buying gins without knowing what it's going to taste like. So in this gin, I'm getting characterization of crushed seashells, white floral notation, Amalfi lemon. And so the immediacy on this gin is fantastic, the freshness and uh, the quality of the gin itself. So they take out the heads and the tails, which is expensive. And hence, this is a higher price point. And I think this is a luminous, um, beautiful, gorgeous gin that I look forward to tasting all the time. And uh, the next gin would be the Reitzenbauer. This is an Austrian gin uh, known as Blue Gin. You can see I'm quite a ways down towards the end of the bottle itself. On a gin like this, it's a little more difficult to find here, at least in Western US, but I definitely will not drink that until I have a replacement bottle. And when I view more expensive gins or harder to get gins, I don't drink them all the time. I might have them once a month, even once a quarter, if it's that rare. So I'm definitely you know, being very careful on how I look at that. This is very different than say the Monkey 47. Obviously not, no two gins are gonna be alike, but I think this is a, a very beautiful characterization of white pepper notation, bay leaf notes. Um, the nuanced ginger is definitely there and the spice notation. So it's a nice balanced gin. One where I think it's sophisticated, beautiful, and does quite well in a cocktail and lasts throughout the entire life of a cocktail. This is a Condesa. This is a beautiful Mexico City gin here. This is called Classica, and this is made with Palo Santo. It's a nice, uh, gorgeous package, and where I thought this gin, when I first tasted it, I thought, oh, I'm gonna like it, and it ended up being in my top 10. I think this is such a unique gin, so polished, uh, elegant, and the Palo Santo gives a nice coolness. It gives a nice freshness to the gin, and you can see on the label itself, I actually I'll point it out to you here if you wanna look at that. This is uh, termed as a London extra dry gin. So 
if you see that, you know that this is not getting any loss of spice characterization. The juniper is definitely evident in there. The Palo Santo gives such a great freshness to it. It's not like a, even though I might use the word cucumber, it is even more refreshing than that and much more distinctive. It does last quite well in a cocktail. It's a 98 point gin. And the um, uh, Maista de Celadora in Mexico City, her name is Hilam Salom. And she does have another gin, which I hope to be tasting this year and reviewing as well. So Mayfair is a 95 point gin. The notations that I, that I get from this are a really nice evergreen notation, nicely balanced. I'm getting autumnal characterization, pepper, herb garden, a bit of dill and bay leaf notation. Additionally on that, I'm getting a notation of uh, what I call Douglas fir. I don't believe Douglas fir is part of this, but to me that's the evocation. That's a beauty of gin. That's a beauty of uh, the beverage itself is sometimes the material notation does uh, annotate slightly and gives a different characterization. I definitely pull this out of this gin itself. And so I definitely love and find that uh, romantic quality of evergreen uh, characterization in beverages. I, I find it to be just so harmonious and beautiful. The next gin is also 95 points, Oshitan from Piamonte. And it's a beautiful, clean gin, one where it's uh, leaning on some malty lemon peel. Uh, spice notation, a bit of that oyster shell going on here, as well as white floral bouquet, uh, leather suede notes. So to me, that Piemonte represents a very northerly Italian experience and uh, evergreen experience. Uh, cracked pepper, lavender, I believe, is the secret ingredient. They do list that they have a secret ingredient, secret material. I believe that's what it is. I could be completely wrong, but I ultimately appreciate a purple flower notation. Working with lavender, it's such a delicate, you know, can be very overexpressed quite quickly. There's one gin in the marketplace I think about is over the top and it's lavender characterization. This is not one of them. It would not be in my top 10 if that were the case. And number seven is uh, Caden Head's uh, Old Raj Blue Label Gin. And really it's getting that notation of saffron and it is uh, a nice characterization where saffron can, you know, obviously like when I talked about lavender, saffron can go over the top very, very quickly and overexpress and uh, even hide notations in my opinion. But this is a very nice small kiss of saffron. It gives some coloration, not a lot, but it is completely noticeable. It is nice to mix with. And so it's one that I very much enjoy. Number eight is Tanqueray Bloomsbury. Uh, apparently this is Charles Waugh Tanqueray's original recipe. It, they only produced 100,000 bottles, I think in 2018. And I definitely tried to get a second bottle. I could not get it. So it didn't come across as its green bottle cousin. So I love the evergreen characterization of Tanqueray Bloomsbury. So juniper along with uh, Douglas fir is very evident as well as notation of spice, a uh, really nice characterization of uh, green and yellow citrus and uh, a bit of herbaceous note as well. So I think this is a little more pronounced, a little more distinctive than its cousin, the green bottle, the mass market produced Tanqueray gin. Number nine is a South African producer called Inveroche. You know, it is a very special gem and it is a 98 point gem. It is a gem that I would say it's not for everyone. So if you are really wary of a floral gin, this may not be the gin for you. So be sure to taste this gin before you buy it and see if you like this gin. I think it's fantastically memorable, distinctive, and one where the floral notation is, uh, you know, not over the top. It's not a, a particular notation, but it's an overall uh, ribbon of notes and I think they go nicely together with this gin. They blend well, they mix well. It's uh, memorable. When I taste this gin, it is not like any other gin that I'm tasting. It is completely delightful. Number 10 are two gins that tie for this uh, particular number. Cotswolds Dry Gin from Cotswolds in England uh, United Kingdom and I think this is a really handsome. It's a cloudy gin. So for example, you're making a gin and tonic on this. It's going to be a cloudy gin and tonic and that's just the way this uh, gin is composed. It's absolutely delightful. And I think the uh, ingredient on there that is uh, you know, really key and characteristic are, obviously the bay laurel is uh, very evident as well as lavender notation, uh, grapefruit, dry thyme, tarragon. So what I very much appreciate is a green citrus notation. I really, really enjoy the earl gray tea notation and the scent of uh, fruit orchard in fall time. So freshly cracked pepper. Now this gin does well in a cocktail. In number 10, the tie for number 10 is Santa Fe Spirits called Wheeler's Western Dry Gin. Wheeler in terms of an homage to the highest 
elevation point in New Mexico. And so this is absolutely distinctive. I get from this gin is it's completely fresh and approachable. It definitely gives me that homage to the Western uh, characterization of gin. What I'm getting from this in particular, and again, this is a gin that it is not for everyone. This is not gonna be London dry. That's not the point of this gin. It's even called Western dry gin. So one thing I love about this gin, it's completely fresh, approachable, and one that is memorable. And so they use a magenta flower of the local Choya cactus. And that gives, I would say, some characterization of almost like a cucumber, but even more compelling in my opinion as well as I don't believe this is a characterization or a material they use is pine nut, but I get a pine nut notation, which is a sense of a hint of sweetness, but also earthiness. So there's a lot of things that I get from this gym. And I term this a 94 point gin out of 100 points, a little more difficult to find in the United States. It's only really available throughout, say, the Southwest United States. Now, if you're looking for something completely different, this is a gin to be tasting. It is completely appreciable, delicious, and delightful. And one where I think the uh, Western stylization is really compelling. I really lean most of the time on London dry gin. That is my style for Central European gins. So when I think of a gin like this, this is a nice way to not always think that London dry is the only choice for you. So I think these are a nice selection of 10-11 uh, gins that I'm selecting for this part of the year. And I do expect that to change out. So the gins I have on my taste list for this year are Ferdinand Czar gin, the Illusionist Barbarian dry gin, and uh, as well as common ground number one, uh, Condesa prickly pear and orange blossom, Wonderbird Spirits number 97 Magnolia Experimental Gin and uh, Inverocious Verdant and Amber Gins. So many more reviews to come. These are my top 10 for the beginning of January of 2023. And again, more information, I'll put my list of gin reviews up here. It's a playlist as well as these individual gin reviews. Be sure to share this video with somebody interested in gins. Thank you for watching today. I will see you in the next video review. Sante.